Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report, today for April the 28th of 2021. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams, and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But on today's show, we're talking numbers, PlayStation full year earnings, Xbox quarterly earnings. There's a lot of money going around in this gaming industry. Industry, and we're talking about it all right here today. Let's start things off with Jeff Keighley, who reports on the PlayStation earnings call, saying 7.8 million PlayStation 5s have been sold, 47.6 million PlayStation Plus subscribers now exist, 338 million games have been sold for PS4s and PS5s in the past year, and $24.4 billion in gaming revenue has been generated in the past year from PlayStation. And Keighley notes that the global box office was $11.5 billion in 2020, with many theaters closed. Closed, leading to that number being more than doubled by one company in the gaming industry alone. Now, I'm just going to read verbatim the entire article from James Batchelor here over on GamesIndustry.biz because there are a lot of financials to break down here. The launch of the PlayStation 5 and a solid lineup for PlayStation 4 helped to drive a strong year for Sony Corporation. The company released its financial results for the full year ending March 31st, 2020, which shows revenue growth in all but two of its divisions, led as usual by the game and network services segment, which operates PlayStation. Buried within the report, Sony has revealed PlayStation 5 has shipped 7.8 million units into retail since launching in November. This includes 4.5 million during its launch quarter and 3.3 million in the three months ending March 31st. While Sony only reports on shipments into retail, the ongoing sellout of PS5 stock, wherever it appears, likely makes it safe to say the full 7.8 million has been sold to consumers. Earlier this month, MPD confirmed it's the best-selling console in U.S. history when looking at lifetime dollar and unit sales for the first five months of a release. Meanwhile, PS4 shipments for the full year dropped from 13.5 million in 2019 fiscal year to 5.7 million, a natural consequence as Sony focused on its next-gen device. Sony sold 338.9 million games in the past year across the two consoles, up from 276.1 million the previous year. Of these, 58.4 million were first party, up from 49.2 million in fiscal year 2019. Digital downloads of full games accounted for 65% of all sales for the full year, rising to 79% in the most recent quarter. By comparison, digital accounted for 53% of game sales in the previous fiscal year and 68% in its final quarter. Looking at its network services, there were 47.6 million PlayStation Plus subscribers by the end of Q4 fiscal year 2020, up from the 41.5 million seen this time last year. All of this added to a great year for the GNS division, or the Games and Network Services division I should say, with total sales amounting to 2.7 trillion yen or $24.8 billion, which is a 34% year-over-year rise. Software and add-on sales made up the bulk of this at 1.5 trillion yen or $13.8 billion, up 43%. Hardware sales rose 34% year-on-year to $7 billion, while network services such as PlayStation Plus rose 14% to $3.5 billion. This was, of course, boosted by the launch of the PlayStation 5, but some key new releases for PS4 also contributed. While Sony did not specify these in its reports, the platform holder had a strong year with the launch of The Last of Us Part II, which sold 4 million in its first few days, and Ghost of Tsushima, which recently reached 6.5 million units. Operating income was reported at $31.4 billion, up 44% from the previous year, and growth for this was limited due to the strategic price points of the PS5 models themselves, which were set lower than the manufacturing cost, not an unusual tactic for platform holders launching new consoles. There were also increases in selling general and administrative expenses related to the launch of the PlayStation 5, which also affected the income. Game and network services remain the biggest segment at Sony Corporation, with its revenue more than 500 billion yen, or $4.6 billion, ahead of electronics, products, and solutions, the second most lucrative division. 
Overall, Sony Corporation reported revenues of 8.9 trillion yen, or $81.7 billion, a modest increase of 9% year-on-year. Operating income came in at 971.9 billion yen, or $8.9 billion, up 17%, or excuse me, up 15%. In short, PlayStation is continuing to perform very, very well, and the next fiscal year is going to be even more impressive. As the stock begins to catch up to demand, more PlayStation 5s are going to be flying off store shelves, and I have no idea when that demand is going to cease, because it seems like this is the most desired console in history. People are loving the PlayStation 5, and as soon as they go in stock, they're immediately gone. On top of that, you also have some very big games that are coming out in the year ahead. You have Horizon Forbidden West, God of War, and more that are on the way. So that fiscal year is going to be very, very strong as well. But the important thing to note about this past year is that this was during a global pandemic where gaming really is the branch that people needed to not only connect with the outside world, but to fill a lot of their time that would normally be used for going to movies, going out with friends, going out to bars. That was replaced with gaming for a lot of the population. And so you see the fruits of those labors. You see the fruits of supporting these new habits that people are developing. But ultimately, it comes down to the element of quality. Sony is bringing a quality experience through the world of PlayStation. Could it be better? Yes. Could every company always be better? Yes. But PS4s and PS5s are fantastic pieces of hardware that bring you a fantastic time, that have fantastic stories that are being told, and unique experiences that players love. That is the power of PlayStation, my friends. With that being said, we also have the Xbox Q3 report, which is also very, very impressive. Of course, with the launch of a next generation of consoles, I would expect nothing less. Benji Sales on Twitter reports more about these Q3 results, hitting the highlights, saying overall gaming revenue is up 50%. Content and services grew by 34%. Growth has been primarily due to first-party and third-party games, as well as Game Pass increases. And Xbox hardware revenue grew by an incredible 232%, driven by Xbox Series X and S demand. Very strong results, Benji says here, and if you want more information, Windows Central has more of the breakdown itself and a screenshot of the report. The Xbox brand is going to continue to thrive in the years ahead. I will say I think Q4 might have similar results to Q3 in terms of hardware sales, but in terms of games being sold, I think we'll really see a boon this fall because of Halo Infinite and because of these big next-generation experiences that are on the way from these two teams that Microsoft has developing next generation exclusives. But I will also say you see two different approaches here. Xbox hardware continues to sell very well, just as PlayStation hardware continues to sell very well. No matter what console you're going for, Series X, Series S, or PlayStation 5, as soon as it goes into stock, it's off of the store shelf. People want these consoles very, very badly. But PlayStation had some games up front. You have Sony's uh, approach with Spider-Man Miles Morales. You have uh, Demon Souls. You have now Returnal and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You have some big next-gen games that are coming exclusively to the PlayStation 5. Xbox is focusing on backward compatibility. You have a lot of new features that are coming to older games. You have upscaling the resolution, you have auto HDR, you have quick resume, you have a lot of these quality of life functionalities that are really bringing a new life to something that somebody might have missed last gen or that somebody might have missed a few generations ago. I know that I've been digging into my backlog and playing things like Dead Space, where I never got a chance to play that back on the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, so I'm diving in now. I kind of want to play Banjo-Kazooie on my cloud gaming device, which is another area that Xbox is focusing on. And so you you see the hardware being the focus for Microsoft right now with games currently in development, and then you see PlayStation, where they could add a couple of quality of life features here and there that Xbox has on their piece of hardware, but they're focusing on games, they're delivering experiences. And so, no matter how you cut it, these are two very eligible experiences that are getting consumers in the store, they're getting them to buy these consoles, and the revenue continues to come in. And it's cool to see because we, the players, are buying these new consoles when we can, and then we are sending revenue up to the companies who are reinvesting in these ecosystems, and it begins to make everything better. You see better hardware, you see better games, you see happier consumers who spend more money, you see better hardware, better games, and it just continues going around like that, because right now, 
We're in the golden age of gaming, my friends. This is a fantastic time to be into this industry. Whether you're on Xbox, Series X, or PS5, you've got a fantastic experience coming your way in the years ahead, and so many worlds to explore. That is very, very powerful. So ultimately, Q3 was very strong for Xbox for fiscal year 21, and for fiscal year 2020, PlayStation has continued to thrive, so it looks like we are going to have a very strong generation in the years ahead. But before we go, I did want to clarify this. Resident Evil Reverse is not releasing with Resident Evil Village and will instead debut this summer. Everyone was under the assumption that Reverse, the multiplayer game coming from Capcom, was going to be bundled in on day one with Village, their new Resident Evil Evil game coming out in just a couple of weeks, but it seems that's not actually the case. According to a tweet from Resident Evil 8 Village Info and Countdown, the Resident Evil ambassadors have received an email mentioning that Reverse will be available in the summer. I also received that email and there are no further details. So... It seems that we are going to be getting this sometime, maybe June or July, uh, but Resident Evil Village is one of the biggest games of the spring season, and Reverse is the four to six player game that will pit players against each other in a deathmatch style game. Players would first spawn as famous Resident Evil characters, but upon death would be revived as a bioweapon character in revenge style. Now the multiplayer component of Village is not launching alongside the game. To be clear, there is also another multiplayer component that will be included, I would assume, on day one, uh, but for this standalone reverse kind of experience, look for that sometime around June or July, again, if I had to guess. And in my opinion, that's probably the better way to do it, because whenever you look to Resident Evil 2 Remake, no one really cared about that asymmetrical multiplayer game. Everyone was focused on the remake itself rather than this kind of supplemental experience that came with it. And so when you take that into consideration, it makes much more sense to give the game some time to breathe for people to go through, play Resident Evil 8, to explore that in full, and then whenever they get bored, hey, why not? Let's boot up Reavers, see what all of that's about. Uh, so I think that's probably a wise decision, but if I had to guess, it's also... Probably just wrapping up development. Um, we're still in a pandemic. People are still working from home and the entire industry is still grappling with this new way to create games. So, hey, you know, it's ready when it's ready. But I'm looking forward to checking it out. And of course, Resident Evil Village, very big game for the spring with a very, very big lady. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know your thoughts on everything we talked about here today. What do you think about those full year earnings for PlayStation? How do you feel about Q3 for Xbox? And of course, will you be playing Resident Evil Reverse? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon and peace.